Hello, this is Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault presented by Blinzall. If you're in the market for some high quality racing oil for your two stroke or four, make sure you go to blinzall.com and use our discount code VAULT20 to save 20% at checkout. Thank you for all the support. This is Hannah. This is Bailey. Welcome to the Motocross Vault! Hello and welcome back to the Motocross Vault. My name is Tony Blazer, and what this video is going to cover is a look back at Honda's all new for 2000 CR125. If you're a fan of the Honda CRs, you're pretty familiar with the fact that they were great machines for a good decade there. From the mid 80s until the mid 90s, the CR125 was, if not the best, certainly one of the best uh, 125s available. They had some issues with suspension, wasn't that great for a few years, but the motor was always really fast. And in the 125 class, motor is pretty much king. I mean, all the 125s, because they're very lightweight and the engines don't, even the most powerful ones don't make a ton of power, they all typically handle pretty well. The suspension usually is not as important on the smaller bikes because of the weight and the power thing. The more powerful and heavier a bike is, obviously, the more uh, critical that suspension component is. So 125s tend to be not as, uh, not as critically uh, impacted by the fact that the suspension is a little bit off. Uh, you can get away with a little bit more on a lighter, smaller bike. But Honda always had the best motors there for many years. They were just rockets. But uh, in the late 90s there, they made a few changes that uh, tend to take the CRs and kind of put them really towards the back of the pack. I had a 1999 CR125 I bought brand new, and it was a turd. Uh, something about Honda's changed the aluminum frames, kind of choked off uh, the intake, I believe, is kind of what people thought. They also made some changes to the cylinders and stuff, but... They, Whatever they did, it didn't work out. That motor was just so much slower. I mean, my buddy had a 99 YZ125 that year, and when I rode his YZ compared to my CR, I was like, I couldn't believe it. It was like his YZ felt like a 200 compared to my 125. It was night and day difference. And I'd had some, you know, CR in the early 90s. I swear to God, I think my 90 was faster than my 99. So it was a pretty, pretty big difference there. In 2000, Honda kind of tried to right the ship. Um, a lot of people had not really liked that first-generation aluminum frame. I thought it looked super cool. I certainly was, I bought into the hype. I was like so psyched. I thought in 97 when they came out with the 250, I was like, this thing is amazing looking. You ride it though, and it, it, the vibration was pretty bad. Uh, what the suspension didn't uh, absorb, it transmitted directly to your hands and your backside on that thing. It was really stiff and kind of harsh feeling. And in 2000s, they tried to rectify that by scaling back the size of the frame spars, changing a lot of stuff with the geometry. And uh, I think the 2000 was pretty much generally uh, consensus-wise a big improvement in terms of performance. So this is the first kind of revamp of the CR125 after it went aluminum framed. And then in 2002, they came out with another one that uh, I think really finally kind of nailed uh, got that suspension and uh, handling combination right. But this 2000, while maybe not the best 125 Honda ever produced, certainly a big improvement over that terrible 99 I had. So this video is going to cover the 2000 specifically and all the stuff they did to change it. And uh, if you'd like to check out some other videos I've done, I have done a history of uh, several Honda models, including the CR80, uh, also the XR250, some other stuff like that. I've done many other reviews, so check out the channel. If you've never been here before, uh, look at some of the other videos I've done. I do a lot of classic bike reviews. If you'd like to support what I do, I offer uh, some Motocross Vault merch. This is one of my shirts here. It's based on my 1990 CR. I also just came out with a Jeff Ward design based on his 1985 uh, KX250. He won the Supercross and 250 title that year. A tough racing Suzuki. Done all kinds of stuff. So if you'd like to check that out, there will be a link in the description below. So here's the story of the 2000 Honda CR125. From the mid-80s through the mid-90s, few machines in motocross were as successful as Honda's CR125R. Great looking, impeccably built, and blessed with the most power in the class, the CR was the gold standard of the Taylor division for a decade. In 1996, that run of horsepower dominance finally ended with the introduction of Yamaha's all-new YZ125. Long the whipping boy of the 125 class, the new YZ stole Honda's thunder with a broad, fast, and wickedly effective spread of power. Honda still held the advantage at the stratospheric end of the power curve, but below those ear-splitting levels, the new blue YZ was king. After losing the top spot to Yamaha in 1996, Honda chose to stand pat in the 125 division in 1997. This was due to the fact that all of their development resources were poured into an all-new alloy-framed CR250 for this season. This machine, while beautiful to look at and incredibly trick, proved a rather controversial machine on the track. Its motor continued to be one of the best in the class, but the new aluminum chassis provided a harsh and unforgiving ride that few people actually appreciated. For 1998, Honda pulled out all the stops and introduced their first all-new CR125 in five years. The redesigned machine adopted a scaled-down version of the CR250R's alloy chassis and made it into an updated 125mm. 
The new motor retained the Honda PowerPort system it had employed since 1990 and paired it with a new 5-speed transmission. According to Honda, the deletion of the 6th gear in the CR's Trinity was aimed at bolstering its reliability. By offering one less cog, the remaining 5 gears could be enlarged and beefed up without increasing the overall weight of the machine. New bodywork finished off the package and made the CR125 look just like its controversial big brother. On the track, this new look CR125 turned out to be a massive step backwards in performance. Instead of overtaking the YZ, the CR was shuffled to the back of the pack with a peaky motor, dead feeling chassis, and hand numbing vibration. The mid range power was good, but the previous CR's awesome top end power was completely missing. Something about the new frame, airbox, or motor design robbed the Honda of its most defining quality and left riders scratching their head in disappointment and disbelief. After mild updates and another drubbing in 1999, it was back to the drawing board for Honda CR125 for the 2000 season. An all-new machine was spec'd out that maintained the alloy chassis, but nipped, tucked, and trimmed it in many significant ways. In addition to the new frame, the bike featured restyled bodywork, updated suspension, and the most significant update of Honda's 125 motor in a decade. Reimagined from the ground up, the new CR125 promised to bring glory back to the big red machine after several years in the wilderness of 125 mediocrity. When redesigning the CR125 for the new millennium, Honda's engineers knew they were going to have to coax some more ponies out of their 8th liter racer if it was going to have any chance of unseating Yamaha's omnipotent YZ125. Broad, torquey, and blisteringly fast, the YZs of the late 90s and early 2000s romped on the competition with power bands that made the other machines feel as if they were minis. In a class where the motor was everything, this was a huge advantage for Yamaha. In order to give the new CR125R a fighting chance, Honda decided to finally retire their successful but aging HPP system and dial up an all-new power valve design. This time, they went to the road race department for inspiration and came up with an all-new design based off of their NSR500 Grand Prix racer. This new design replaced the sliding guillotine valves of the HPP with a rotary flapper design that was lighter, more compact, and simpler to service. Dubbed the Revolutionary Control, or RC valve, this new design was said to offer more precise control and a smoother transition when opening and closing. Internally, the new motor maintained its case reed configuration and continued to offer only five speeds in the transmission. Because the motor was said to offer more torque than the previous designs, Honda added an additional plate for a total of eight to the clutch for additional durability. On the intake side, the new bike featured a totally redesigned airbox and air boot. This had long been suspected to be one of the choke off points of the old motor and one of the reasons for the 98's loss of power. This new design was 35% larger and freer breathing in hopes of finding some of the old bike's top end power. In addition to a new airbox, a new carburetor with spec that replaced Honda's longtime partner Kahin with an all new 36mm McCuny TMX mixer. According to Honda, this was done to improve throttle response on the previously boggy motor. Finishing off the motor package was an all new expansion chamber and a silencer tuned to the characteristics of the new mill. On the chassis side of things, Honda was just as thorough with its redesign as it had been with the motor. In 1997, when Honda had first introduced the alloy frame on the CR250, the press and public had gone gaga over its spacey appearance and trickness quotient. It literally looked unlike anything else ever offered for sale in the motocross arena and captured massive sales on the basis of Honda's reputation and an expectation that it just had to be good. Once in consumers' hands, however, the new bike proved to be a harder sell. When designing the first generation chassis, Honda had prioritized durability over all else, and the result had been an overly stiff and unforgiving feel. For 2000, Honda looked to remedy this complaint by completely redesigning the alloy chassis on the CR125. The new frame aimed to increase comfort by both downsizing the dimensions of the frame and dialing in some much needed flex. To accomplish this, the engineers reduced the size of the main frame spars by 10 millimeters and switched from extrusion to forging for the head tube. The double down tubes of 1998 and 1999 were also retired in favor of a single down tube for 2000 and the frame spars were narrowed 15% to give the bike a slimmer feel overall. To improve handling, the steering head's angle was steepened by 0.65 degrees and the shock was repositioned to sit 20 millimeters farther forward. The wheelbase was also increased slightly by 0.4 inches and the main frame spars were repositioned 30 millimeters lower to improve ergonomics and centralized mass. All told, these changes added up to a slimmer feel and an impressive 25% increase in torsional flex. Normally, an increase in flex was not the sort of thing manufacturers would brag about, but after the poor reception the first generation chassis had received, this increase in flex was a welcome change. 
On the suspension end of things, the 2000 CR125R received all new components both front and rear. At the front, a new 46mm Kiaba SASS, which stood for Speed Activated Spring System Fork, promised plusher action, improved bottoming feel, and increased steering precision. This new fork, often referred to as a bladder design, used a small rubber sleeve over the cartridge system to separate the fork oil from the oil in the cartridge system itself. This was done to minimize the aeration of the fluid. This was basically a simpler and lower cost version of what Shawa was offering with their twin chamber design. Outback, the CR once again employed KYB for the damper duties and paired a new high-low adjuster shock with a redesigned linkage and beefed up swing arm. The new linkage was lighter overall and featured a new curve that was softer initially and then firmer as it neared full travel. The redesigned swing arm featured a new dual taper design with a larger cast cross member and a 5mm larger rear axle. These combined to give the 2000 CR125 rear end a 25% increase in torsional flex resistance over 1999. Finishing off the CR125R package for 2000 was all new bodywork that freshened the looks and improved ergonomics over 99. The new explosion red plastic came in a slightly less deep shade of red and featured new lines and freshened up graphics. The new seat was slightly thicker for 2000 and incorporated a softer seat foam for improved rear end comfort. To further aid comfort, new clamps were bolted on that offered both reversible offset mounts and rubber grommets. This was done to both allow for more customization and reduce some of the annoying vibration that had plagued the previous generation alloy frame CRs. On the track, the 2000 CR125 turned out to be a major improvement over the bike it replaced. The new motor continued to be devoid of any low end torque, but mid range performance was strong. Top end power was improved over 99, but it was still not the CR's strong suit. It continued to do its best work in the mid range and preferred to be short shifted rather than revved out. Out of corners, a fair amount of clutch abuse was necessary to get it past the lethargic low end, but once it was on the pipe, the CR was at least competitive with its rivals. Thankfully, the new 8 plate clutch was up to this abuse but the machine's heavy clutch pull was panned by most riders. Compared to the class-leading YZ125, the CR was less potent at every point on the curve. In the mid-range, it came close to giving the blue machine a run for its money, but above or below that sweet spot, the YZ pulled away. In a fight against the KX or RM, the CR did fare better, and there it could hold its own. If you picked a fight with KTM's 125, however, it was best to brush up on your blocking skills and learn to ride a wide bike, lest the potent Austrian leave you in its vapor trail. With 32.1 horsepower on tap, the new CR125 motor set dead center in the peak power sweepstakes. It was less potent than the broad YZ and rocket fast KTM, but sprightlier than the KX or RM. As long as you could keep it in that sweet spot of its mid-range focused power band, the CR was competitively fast. On the handling front, the new CR was once again majorly upgraded for 2000. The new frame felt much thinner through the middle and more responsive on the track. The dead feeling of the old overbuilt chassis was greatly lessened, and the new bike steered, tracked, and felt basically as a 125 should. It was still far stiffer than any other 125 available, but it no longer thudded in the whoops and pushed the front end in the corners. With its more resilient chassis, plusher seat, and rubber-mounted bars, the bike was far less tiring to ride than the year before. Vibration was still more noticeable on it than any of the other machines in the class, but at least it no longer numbed your digits within a few minutes of getting on the bike. On the suspension end of things, the new CR125R offered one of the best overall packages on the track in 2000. The new Kiaba forks were set up very well for heavier or faster riders and provided a well damped and very controlled ride. At low speeds it was sufficiently plush and at high speeds they maintained excellent damping performance. Even on big hits, bottoming was never a problem and the bike offered the best combination of firmness and comfort in the class. Outback, the new KYB damper was equally praiseworthy. It offered 12.2 inches of travel with adjustments for both high and low speed compression as well as rebound damping. As with the forks, the shock was set up slightly stiff for slower or lighter riders, but for hardcore motocross it was spot on. Big whoops and mega leaps were no problem on the CR, and the harder you charged it, the better it performed. While some riders preferred the KX's plusher feel, fast guys loved the Honda's better bottoming resistance and superior high speed performance. On the detailing side, the new CR125 was an improvement in most areas over its predecessor. The new frame was thinner through the middle and more forgiving in the rough. Most riders loved the new thicker seat, slimmer bodywork, and reversible rubber mounted bar clamps. While slimmer overall than 1999, the CR did continue to be wider at the pegs than any of its 125 competition. Not everyone was bothered by this, but some riders commented on it when switching from brand to brand. On the awesome side were the Honda's brakes, which offered tons of power, excellent feel, and very minimal maintenance. 
grips, which were very high quality and comfortable, levers, which were tough, comfortable, and malleable, and overall fastener quality, which was far better than what you found on most of the competitors. With its alloy frame, high quality materials, and impeccable build quality, the CR also looked and felt fresh long after the point where the KX, RM, and YZ had begun to show their age. As long as you kept the filter clean and changed the top end at regular intervals, the CR was as bulletproof as any 125 could be. In the minus column were the CR stock chain, which was pretty much hot butter, clutch pull, which was way too heavy for a 125, vibration, which was better but annoying, and lackluster low end. Lowering the gearing helped slightly with this, but there was no getting around the fact that the power band was just not as wide as the YZ125. In 2000, Honda reinvented its CR125 in hopes of recapturing its lost mojo. The new machine turned out to be a major step forward in many ways, but not the one that probably counted the most. Without a world-beating motor to back up its excellent chassis, the CR125Rs of the 2000s and beyond were destined to be liked, but not loved in the way their predecessors had been. So there you have it. That's a look back at the uh, 2000 Honda CR125, a machine that was, you know, a pretty big improvement in most ways. Certainly, I love the looks of it. Great looking machine. I love the bodywork they came out with in uh, 2000. Better looking than the 99, better handling than the 99, better suspension. The motor was better, not great still. At the time, the Yamaha was pretty much the dominant machine in, in the 125 class. And unfortunately, a year later, Yamaha would introduce the machine that would eventually kill the 125 for all intent and purposes, the uh, YZ250F. So, the 125 two-strokes days, at least as an elite motocross machine, were coming to an end. And Honda would make a few renovations to the CR. In 02, they'd get an all-new chassis. And they would keep changing the motor around, but it just never got back to that kind of uh, lead-dominant position they'd had in the early 90s. It, uh, these CRs were great bikes in every way but the motor. And as I said in the intro, the you know the 125 class really was dominated by the motor. So if you were behind in that category, you were really at a, a pretty big disadvantage. So... These are cool bikes. You know, now who cares if it's fast or not? Nobody, you know, nobody really cares. They're cool bikes to restore and what have you. I have people hit me up on Instagram and Twitter and all the time and ask me, hey, what's the best 125 to restore? It's like, I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter. You're not racing the nationals on it. I would get whatever you like. And Honda certainly tend to be more durable than a lot of the other machines. And they, you know, they feel fresh longer. And if they're 20 years old, they're typically still a little tighter. So it's a good machine to restore. You're going to be riding it for fun anywhere, so who cares? So at this point, it doesn't matter that it wasn't the fastest bike. If you like this sort of thing, like I said, check out some of the other videos I've done on the channel. Uh, if you could like, subscribe, share your uh, share the video, tell your friends, I would very pre very much appreciate it to help uh, grow the channel. Uh, I certainly appreciate all the support here. Leave a comment if you have any other suggestions for videos you'd like to see, other motocross bikes. I have tons of them in the, in the pipeline there to try and do. So, so until we meet again, this is Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault. Keep the rubber side down. Peace.